Are the chemicals in sunscreen dangerous? Today I'm going over scientific studies on chemical versus mineral sunscreens, which ingredients are getting absorbed into your body and could be dangerous, and which ingredients have been established as safe. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time research scientist with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other studies here to help you reach your health, fitness, weight loss, and nutrition goals. And today's video came about because on a recent anti-aging skincare strategies video, a lot of you requested a full video on sunscreen. So here we are. And in this video, I will be going over different categories of sunscreen, the safety of different ingredients, some considerations for choosing an SPF, and finally a nuance that no one is talking about that pretty much blew my mind when doing the research for this video and forever has changed my approach to shopping for sunscreen and has made me very suspicious of a lot of sunscreen brands. Not to be dramatic, but I think it is a pretty big deal. And at the very end, I will go over my recommendations and what I do to prevent skin cancer and avoid sun damage and wear sunscreen in a way that is research-backed to be safe and effective. So sunscreens are typically broken into two categories, chemical and mineral. Now, both of them actually contain plenty of chemicals, but the distinction comes down to what the active UVA and UVB blocking ingredients are. So in mineral-based sunscreens, those ingredients are zinc oxide and or titanium dioxide. Whereas in chemical-based sunscreen, there's a whole bunch of different types of UV filters that get used. And those ingredients in chemical sunscreens that block UV are sometimes called organic UV filters, but that does not mean the same thing in any way, shape, or form as organic produce. And it certainly does not imply that they are healthier. It's just saying that those are not minerals. And you can mostly tell if a sunscreen is mineral or chemical by determining if it says it is mineral-based, because if a sunscreen is mineral-based, it will usually advertise that as so. And you can easily check in the active ingredients section by looking for zinc oxide and or titanium dioxide. On the other hand, chemical sunscreens don't really label themselves as chemical most of the time for perhaps obvious reasons, because it's not a great marketing strategy to label yourself as chemical-based. However, some sunscreens are labeled in a very misleading way that I think should be illegal, which I will talk about more at the end of this video. And now for a couple differences between these two you might care about. Mineral sunscreens act as a shield and they actually sit on top of your skin and reflect off the sun rays. So they're actually blocking and preventing light from reaching your skin. Whereas chemical sunscreens actually absorb into your skin and just prevent the damage that would happen when UV hits your skin. So they absorb that UV once it gets to your skin. And they can be equivalent in terms of effectiveness. You just need to look at the SPF and make sure that whatever sunscreen you're buying blocks both UVA and UVB rays. And for a small aside about SPF, there's been a lot of backlash in recent years saying, oh, you don't need such high SPF. You only need SPF 30 because that's the recommended amount because it blocks 97% of UV rays. However, there are interesting studies coming out showing that there are advantages to higher SPF because the vast majority of people do not use the recommended quantity of sunscreen on their skin for obvious reasons, because if you were to use the recommended quantity of sunscreen, a lot of the time you would end up looking really weird and we have to be around other people most of the time and we don't want to look bizarre by having a gigantically obvious layer of sunscreen on. So what studies have found is that if you use an ultra high SPF, like SPF 70 or SPF 100, then applying a thin layer of that can get you up to SPF 30. For example, a study found that people applying SPF 70 at the usual thin rate they would gets them up to SPF 19 of actual protection on their skin, whereas people using a thin typical layer of SPF 100 got them up to an actual effective SPF of 27. So what these studies imply is that if you don't like to put on a thick layer of sunscreen, then you will want to choose a high or ultra high SPF sunscreen to get yourself to that bare minimum of protection. And also what this implies is that if you are using low SPF products and you want to make sure to put on as thick of a layer as you can manage or deal with in order to actually get that sun protection. And I really wish I could give you a specific quantity that you need to put on, but these studies are in terms of milligrams per centimeter squared. And I can tell you that doing two milligrams per centimeter squared is the ideal and that most people do 0.5 milligrams per centimeter squared, but that's not going to help you because you have no idea what that, right? None of us can look in the mirror and say, I've hit two milligrams per centimeter squared. But one guideline I see out there is you should have a shot glass of sunscreen to cover your entire body if it's SPF 30 or greater. But of course, bodies vary drastically in size, so I don't know how helpful that is either. 
And now back to our main topic of sunscreen types and ingredients. So when it comes to chemical sunscreens, so non-mineral sunscreens, we unfortunately do not yet know if those chemicals are dangerous. And the studies that have been coming out recently are not looking good. So for example, a big 2020 study found that the chemicals in chemical sunscreen really linger on our skin for a long time, even up to two weeks and beyond, even with daily showers. And in really bad news, we do know for sure that the vast majority of these chemicals, if not all of them, get absorbed into our blood rapidly in high concentrations after a single application of sunscreen, and they can stick around for at least 21 days for some of the chemicals. So some chemicals do get cleared within a week or so, but there are at least a few that stick around for three weeks and longer circulating in our blood. And we don't know how much longer they might stick around because no one has looked at that yet. And in perhaps even worse news, it also gets into breast milk. And this news on its own wouldn't necessarily be bad if we knew that these chemicals are safe, but we don't know that yet. The FDA directly says right on their fact sheet about this that we do not know if these are safe yet. And animal research is suggesting that these chemicals, at least a lot of them, are probably having negative effects on us. So for example, in animal research, these chemicals have been found to cause hormone disturbances, both to reproductive hormones and thyroid hormones and other endocrine systems as well as especially bad effects on development. So like fetuses and babies developing. So what are these chemicals? There are too many to list out loud in a video because it would be exceptionally boring and impossible to retain, but I am including a list of the chemicals that were identified in the FDA report as a screenshot here. And I will also have a list of the different chemicals in chemical sunscreens on my blog so that you can see if any of these chemicals are in the sunscreens that you are buying. And you can find what the active chemicals are in your sunscreen by looking in the active ingredients section because that is where these different UV filtering chemicals will be listed. And as a note, there are two ingredients for sunscreen that used to be used for a long time, decades ago, that have been shown to definitely be dangerous and they are banned in US sunscreen products these days. And I'll also list those on the blog post just to make sure you're not accidentally buying sunscreen with those in them. And I would guess that some of the current sunscreen ingredients will be going that way before long as we figure out which ones are definitely dangerous versus which ones are actually okay. And also a lot of these different ingredients in chemical sunscreens are poisoning sea life, destroying reefs, and form toxic compounds when they get into our waterways and combine with different things like chlorine. So there's a lot not to love about chemical sunscreens right now as we are figuring out which compounds are okay and which compounds are bad for us or bad for the environment. And also as a note, watch out for random online articles recommending reef safe or environmentally friendly or healthy chemical sunscreen ingredients because I found an article just right front and center, very popular, literally listing two of the banned ingredients in the US as great reef safe sunscreen ingredients. So there's a lot of misinformation out there. It is well established that these two ingredients are dangerous and you should not use them in sunscreen. And yet these are being recommended by random like green or like, you know, health blogs and stuff. So to sum up this chemical sunscreen discussion, we don't know if the chemicals in chemical sunscreen are dangerous. There's a lot of different ones that get used and animal research is suggesting that at least several of those are probably bad for us because they are bad for animal models that have been used to study things that will affect humans. And it is known that these chemicals are getting absorbed into our blood and sticking around for quite some time in many cases. However, I imagine that some of these chemicals will eventually be found to be safe and get added to our nice safe list, whereas some of these chemicals will be found to be definitely toxic and they will be added to our banned list. So I do have hope that in the future, we will be able to know which chemicals are good and which are definitely bad. And now for the good news and your ability to breathe a sigh of relief if you are trying to prevent skin cancer and keep your skin protected is that research strongly supports that mineral-based sunscreens that are based on zinc oxide and or titanium dioxide are definitely safe as long as you keep two caveats in mind when you are buying and using them. And that first caveat is it is best to avoid spray sunscreens because generally sprays contain nanoparticles of zinc oxide and or titanium dioxide and you do not want to breathe in these compounds. They're great when they sit on your skin and you can wash them off, but they are not great when they go into your lungs and kind of tear things up in there. So definitely best to use a lotion or pump or anything non-spray for your sunscreen. And also it is a win-win to avoid nanoparticles as much as you can because nano versions of mineral-based sunscreens are damaging to sea life. Unfortunately, it's really hard to find out which lotion-based mineral sunscreens contain nanoparticles versus don't, but I think awareness is growing really rapidly about 
nanoparticles being bad for sea life. So hopefully we will soon have some better labeling and be better able to figure out which mineral-based sunscreens are not destroying sea life. And now the second caveat is also the crazy thing I was mentioning that no one seems to be talking about, but that seems pretty important. Some recent studies are finding that when you combine chemical sunscreen ingredients with mineral sunscreen ingredients, really bad things happen. So for example, when you combine chemical sunscreen ingredients, pretty much any of them, with zinc oxide, you get a toxic byproduct once that mixture is exposed to UV. So if you have a sunscreen that consists of both mineral and chemical-based ingredients and you go out in the sun, you are producing toxic photodegradation products that could potentially be damaging your skin. Now, we need more studies on that. It's still pretty preliminary, but this definitely suggests we should not be combining these sunscreen ingredients, especially because there's no reason to, really. And while making this video, I wondered if this research really had much real-world relevance because why would a brand make sunscreen that combines both chemical ingredients and mineral ingredients? Like, there's no reason to be doing that, right? Wrong. I was very dismayed to find that a sunscreen that I used to use that has literally MD in the brand name because it's supposed to be by dermatologists making the best cutting edge skin products actually advertises a mineral-based sunscreen that is said to be a zinc sunscreen. But if you look in the active ingredients, it in fact contains the ingredients that are used in chemical sunscreen in addition to zinc. So apparently brands are allowed to advertise sunscreen as being mineral-based as long as the sunscreens do contain minerals even if they also have all those nasty chemicals from chemical sunscreen. And it's just adding insult to injury because you wanna go mineral-based a lot of the time to be healthier and avoid chemicals when in fact you are actually getting exposed to a worse chemical cocktail than you might've gotten just from going straight for a chemical sunscreen. So definitely be cautious when you are shopping for sunscreen. Thankfully, now that you are armed with this knowledge, you can easily avoid this problem by just directly looking at the active ingredients list when you are buying sunscreen and just completely disregard all the BS that the manufacturers use to advertise what category their sunscreen is. And so to determine if a sunscreen is truly mineral-based and does not contain chemical UV filters, all you need to do is make sure that the active ingredients list only contains zinc oxide and or titanium dioxide. So the combination of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide is totally fine. Those are both minerals. They play very nicely together. Or you can get either one alone. But just make sure you're not having a bunch of other things listed along with zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. And this also applies to products that contain SPF like foundation or moisturizer or other things. So just keep your eye on that active ingredients list and cross check any unrecognized chemicals with the list I have on my blog post for this video linked below to determine if your foundation or moisturizer or whatever may have any of these chemical sunscreen ingredients along with the mineral sunscreen ingredients. And now for my recommendations slash what I do, I think the most important thing is to learn about the UV in your area because there's a lot of general recommendations out there that say, oh, don't go outside from 10 to four or 11 to five or whatever it is. But it's actually going to vary drastically depending on your latitude and altitude and time of year and all sorts of things like that. So what I do is I actually go and I look up the UV index just like the weather forecast. And if you type in UV index plus your area, your city or whatever, then you will get a forecast just like the weather of what the UV index will be at different times of day and a higher UV index means more sun damage. And what I do with this information is I try to avoid going outside as much as possible when the UV index is higher than three. And this works out nicely because the UV index is higher than three when it is also miserably hot generally. So I will keep all of my outdoor walks and yard work and all that generally before 9.30 a.m. and after about 6 p.m., depending on the specific time of year. And then during the winter, I'll go out all day because the maximum UV index is about three or four anyway. And I just want to add that being closer to the equator or being at a higher altitude or having snow around will raise your UV index. And also don't think you're safe just because it's cloudy out because actually on some types of cloudy days, the clouds can scatter the light in a way that actually intensifies UV. Although if it's like dark and stormy and raining, then chances are it will be pretty low UV out. Now, if you do need to go out during the day or you spend a lot of your day near windows, then it is definitely worth it to wear sunscreen. So I recommend specifically wearing a non-spray, actually mineral-based sunscreen. Again, check that active ingredients list and make sure it says zinc oxide and titanium dioxide or just one of those. And if you really hate mineral sunscreens, which I totally understand, then I recommend at least making sure you've tried some tinted ones and some sheer ones before giving up. Because I used to hate mineral sunscreens. I tried some really terrible sticky ones and ghostly ones until I finally found two that I really love, which I will link in the description below. 
and one of them is tinted so you literally can't see any white cast at all i'm actually wearing a little bit right now and the other is sheer and it really does seem to go on pretty sheer and conveniently mineral-based sunscreens actually very commonly improve acne because zinc is sometimes used as an acne treatment and I find personally that wearing sunscreen when I am having a breakout really helps it if it's mineral-based. So it's kind of a win-win with most mineral-based, truly mineral-based sunscreens. And if you really can't do mineral sunscreen, whether it's because you completely hate it or you have some sensitivity to it or something, then I do still think it is worth wearing chemical sunscreen rather than going out and getting sun damage and skin cancer and all that. I would, however, recommend staying up to date as much as you can about which ingredients are being identified as safe versus dangerous. I do have a lot of hope that over the next few years, we'll have a lot more studies coming out, clarifying which chemical sunscreen ingredients can really be classified as safe versus should be banned or removed. Gotta love when the battery dies during the last 30 seconds of the video. Anyways, please let me know if you have any other questions on this topic in the comments below. I try my best to answer as many comments as I can and I definitely read them all. I'm just really swamped with work. So I do use the comments to guide my video topics. And also if you want to definitely get an answer every time from a smaller pool of people asking questions, then head on over to my Patreon where I do Q and A's and video requests and all that kind of stuff. And if you're interested in supporting the channel more in a one-time way, then head on over to the GoFundMe and both of these links will be in the description below. And if you found this information helpful or interesting, then please like and share this video so that other people can learn all about sunscreens and which might be best to use. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell below to stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.